In the headlines, bandits kidnap 55 persons escorting bride to matrimonial home. 4.6 million voters go to polls as INEC holds by elections rerun in 26 states. Nigeria beat Angola, secure semi final ticket. And on the foreign scene, Northern Ireland government set to return after a two year gap. Hello and welcome to Trust of This News Update. I am Chiamaka Mwafo. Thanks for joining us. At least 55 persons are said to have been kidnapped by a terrorist gang while escorting a bride home along. Damari town in Sabuwa local government area of Katsina state. Although security agencies are yet to confirm the incident officially, a resident, however, said on Friday that the incident occurred on Thursday at about 8 p.m. He noted that three security volunteers, however, lost their lives in an effort to rescue the victims. According to him, prior to Hoodlum's attack, the victims who were on a charter vehicle initially numbered over 70 and were mostly friends of the bride. Sabawa, apart from being an agrarian area, also remains one of the security frontline local government areas grappling with the activities of bandits and their collaborators who are mostly informants. Suspected gunmen have killed one operative of the Ebonyo State Police Command Patrol Team along Mboi Fuim Road in Ohaku local government area of the state. This was confirmed in a press statement by the acting police public relations officer in Ebonyo State, DSP Joshua Okando. He stated that operatives were attacked by armed men who operated using an ash color Toyota Sienna with registration number unknown. According to Ukandu, the operatives engaged the hoodlums and in the ensuing gun duel, one policeman was killed and another who sustained injuries is currently receiving medical treatment at the hospital. He added that the Commissioner of Police at Boyne State Police Command, Augustina Obodo, has dispatched tactical teams of the command to the scene who are on the trail of the hoodlums. Meanwhile, calm and normalcy have been restored in the area. The commissioner called on well-meaning individuals of the state to avail the command with useful information that can lead to the arrest of the fleeing hoodlums while assuring them of the command's unwavering commitment to the protection of lives and properties in the state. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INIC, is conducting by and rerun elections in 80 local government areas across 26 states of the Federation. Already, the Commission said a total of 4,613,291 Nigerians who have collected their permanent voters' cards, PVCs, are expected to participate in the exercise. The elections are conducted to replace members who died or resigned their memberships of the national and state assemblies, as well as rerun elections at designated constituencies or polling units as ordered by the election appeal tribunals. According to INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the elections would fill vacancies in not less than three senatorial districts, 17 federal and 28 state constituencies spread across 80 local government areas, 575 registration areas, wards, and 8,934 polling units involving 4,903,027 registered voters, out of which 4,613,291 PVCs have been collected. States where the elections will hold include Eboi, Yobi, Kebi, Lagos, Ondo, Taraba, Benue, Boronu, Kaduna, Plateau, Akwaibom, and Anambra. The chairman of the Kaduna State Chapter of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Felix Hassan, has raised an alarm over alleged plans by the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, to indulge in what he described as all manner of undemocratic, clandestine and lawless activities aimed at rigging the rerun elections across the seven affected local government areas. The areas where the by-elections will be held are Kaduna South, Chikun, Igabi, Kachia, amongst others. 
Felix in a statement issued by Special Advice on Media and Publicity, Edward John Outer, alleged that the party is worried that the APC is determined to collude with some corrupt officials of INEC and security agencies to subvert the will of the people and declare the APC candidates as winners of the respective elections at all costs. The statement alleged that the PDP was reliably informed that the APC had perfected plans to buy votes or deploy thugs to unleash mayhem in the circumstances vote buying fails. While expressing confidence in the resolve of the new resident electoral commissioner to organize a credible election and redeem the image of INEC, the PDP alleged that it has uncovered from insider sources that the APC is working with some corrupt INEC staff to obtain fake copies of forms EC8A, which will be used to concord and enter predetermined polling unit results, which will be swapped with the genuine ones in areas where the APC fails to win or is not comfortable with the margin of lead. He urged the Commission of Police and all other heads of the relevant security agencies that would be deployed for the election to take note and direct all other officers and men to be professional, patriotic and impartial. Nigeria grapples with a critical challenge as a substantial 80% of its total revenue is allocated to debt servicing, a concerning trend that has continued since December 2022. This financial strain intensifies with a significant decrease in federal funding for crucial sectors, particularly health, which witnessed a decline from 5.97% in 2012 to 3.3% in 2019. In this report, Dokas Yakubu examines Nigeria's fiscal policy direction and its impact on the economy. According to data from DataFight, the health sector allocation marginally improved to 5.7% in the 2023 budget. However, the education sector faces consistent challenges with only 6.47 trillion naira allocated over seven years. The highest education allocation was 745 billion naira in the 2019 budget, but subsequent years saw a decline, reaching 5.4% in 2022 due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the resultant debt crisis. Today, 98% of our income is what we're using to service debt. What, leaves, what remains of our income is just 2%. And so what would that do for us? All right, we have a budget for 2024, a federal budget, at, of, of 28 trillion um, and our revenue is not up to you know 10 trillion it's about 10 trillion um, or thereabouts okay and then we are using 98 percent of that for instance you know to service debts and we, we just have left with two percent the debt to gdp ratio has breached the self-imposed limit standing at 45.4 percent while the debt servicing to revenue ratio has reached 73.5 percent surpassing the recommended 50 percent threshold these unsustainable public debt level necessitates a reassessment of government spending and revenue generation it's very unfortunate we live in a society where a government will spend money and nobody will account for it through this auditing, auditing process. If you look back at the audit reports for the couple of years, there are funds that have been paid directly into people's purses, mismanaged for several reasons. But nobody is asking those questions, nobody is demanding accountability. That's where I question the, the in, uh, what do you call them? That's where I question the anti corruption agencies on the work they need to do. Stakeholders are advocating tax incentive administration regular audit and reduce dependency on international and private creditor borrowing to end the fiscal crisis. They stress the urgency for government attention to the health and education sectors to facilitate nation building. If government is able to educate the citizens, the government will not worry itself about you know um, job because when people have the knowledge, the skill, they can be able to on their own to source for job. Tax expenditure is revenue foregone by government, revenue that should have accrued to government that they've given up as incentives uh, to encourage establishment of businesses within the country. But the governance process for tax expenditure is done in such a way that it should change government rather than bring the benefits that tax expenditure uh, brings to other nations. The Nigerian government stands at a pivotal moment in economic management.
through strategic policy adjustments, enhance transparency and responsible fiscal practices. It can navigate these challenges and set the course for sustainable economic growth and stability. Dokas Yakubu, Trust TV News, Abuja. Still staying with the economy and its impact, Nigerians are grappling with the detrimental effects of the soaring cost of food commodities like maize, a staple food for most households in northern Nigeria and a vital raw material for poultry feed production. In Gombe State, the soaring prices mean businesses are struggling to open and families cannot afford to make ends meet. Hassan Lawan tells us more. Maize. A fundamental grain in Nigeria holds a significant place in daily diets and poultry-related industries. However, the current exorbitant price is placing a heavy burden on local income earners, particularly those heavily reliant on maize for daily sustenance. In 2017, I bought two bags of maize for 14,000 naira, and as of now, I have to buy for over 1,000 naira. The unfortunate aspect is that my income is not growing to meet the current economic condition because as a tailor, if you can't get 5,000 naira and above daily, it is difficult for you to feed an entire family of three or four and most of us manage only one meal daily. In fact, the condition is terrible, and we are asking for government support. Traders of poultry feed and poultry owners in Gombe are also playing the pinch with maize inflation impacting their profits and threatening their livelihoods. If you look at the price of the maize now, it's almost 50,000. 50, and it affects our business of pit, which was 9,000 before, and now it is uh, about 15 to 16,000. We need some support from government and other agencies to help us in order to uh, improve our business because it's already start collapse. <laughs> The price of maize has negatively impacted our poultry business. We are earning only one third of the profit we used to earn. Now our little profit also goes to poultry feed, and our business is not growing at all for now. For maize traders like Muhammad Tukur, the situation is dire with diminution capital and an impending collapse of their businesses. The situation is worrisome. We are indeed running at loss. If you buy a bag of maize today for 50,000 naira and sell it to customers, you have to match the profit and capital to be able to buy another bag for tomorrow because it will for sure increase. We are suffering. Our business is on the edge of collapse. The government must intervene to save us all. Despite the usual expectation of cheaper farm product during this time of the year, the price of maize is expected to continue to rise. The World Bank says Nigeria, along with other African countries, has been significantly impacted by domestic food price inflation has a long call. Trust TV News, Gwembe. Now we come to the Federal Capital Territory where its minister, Yesung Wike, has delivered a firm warning to civil servants urging them to steer clear of obstructing government initiatives with bureaucratic obstacles. He gave this admonition during the commencement ceremony of a 7.2 kilometer rural road in Tukulu Kaima Bwari Area Council. Wike also emphasized the importance of rallying support for the contractor overseeing the project. Habibata Jai was there and tells us more. In his ongoing rural road project within Buari Area Council, the Health City Minister sustains momentum with infrastructure development, underscoring the significance of synergy between public and private sectors for comprehensive development. The chairman of Buari Area Council extended gratitude to the minister for addressing the community's need and urge for swift completion of previously abandoned projects. The improvements 
safety and security lives and property, especially of commuters and in the rural area. Honorable Minister, sir, we are much impressed by your excellent track record of extraordinary achievement as public officer, and we wish to respectfully commend and encourage you to continue on this path of education and service to humanity. The minister, in his remarks, reiterated the administration's commitment to enhancing security and socio-economic well-being, pledged additional infrastructure initiatives for the rural population. In this year, each area council will be having three roads, which has never happened since the creation of FCT as the Federal Capital Authority. And that's why we want to change the narrative. And this will reduce the rural urban migration. When these roads are done, other facilities or infrastructure have been provided. What is your reason of when you stay in the city? Within how many minutes you leave the city and come back here? Go. Yes, some week he directed the contractor to deploy local content by employing community members, emphasizing the importance of catering to their needs. Habibat Ajayi, Trust TV News, Abuja. This is a news update on Trust Elevation. Up ahead. Price control of good and services grows concern over minimum wage review in Bauchi State. More of this and more when we return. Please do stay with us. Are you drawing any lesson as what went wrong? Why is it that we can't maintain those kind of ventures for a long time? I think a lot of lessons have been learned from that and that has also informed our decision of ensuring that uh, we bring modern techniques into, into the whole thing. We are not one of the richest, but in terms of development, we are catching up with the developed states in the country. And uh, I want to ensure by end of eight years, if we are not one of the two best, we should be ranked among the five best states in the country in terms of uh, turnaround development uh, in our state. I'm talking nationally. Yes. Members of your party are working at cross variance. You have Wiki, who is still in the PDP, taking up post in an APC government. If you are talking about Wiki in PDP taking an appointment with APC government, I think it has not started with Wiki. This started since the coming of this democracy in 1999. A lot of APP, ANPP, CPC members in the past have taken appointment in the government that invited them to come and serve because I think at the moment we're not talking about uh, election, we're talking about governance and, and, and national unity. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. And if you're just joining us, this is a news update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at some of our headlines. Bandits kidnap 55 persons escorting bride to matrimonial home. 4.6 million voters go to polls as INEC holds by elections rerun in 26 states. Now to more news. The National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NARCON, has updated its fares for the 2024 Hajj amidst the instability of the Naira against the US dollar. Chairman of the Commission, Jalal Ahmad Arabi, had initially aimed to maintain the 2024 Hajj fare at 4.5 million Naira that was charged as initial deposit. In the updated fares, intending pilgrims from Nigeria's southern center are required to pay 4.899 million naira. Those from the northern center will pay 4.699 million naira for the Hajj, while pilgrims from Yola and Madugri center will pay a fee of 4.679 million naira for the 2024 Hajj. While expressing his regret, Arabi stated that since the commission is facing a tight deadline of 25th February, it has limited time to explore further options to remain within the range of 4.5 million naira, which he had worked for. A statement, Narcos Assistant Director of Public Affairs, Fatima Sander, 
hinted that intending pilgrims are therefore advised to balance their hard price by Monday 12th of February, accordingly to enable the Commission to transfer the funds before the imminent deadline. Zara assured all Narcan's commitment to ensuring a smooth and successful Hajj pilgrimage for all participants despite the challenges posed by foreign exchange factors. Federal and civil servants in Bauchi State are expressing growing concern over what to expect from the Tripartite Minimum Wage Committee on Minimum Wage, highlighting that the solution to the current economic crisis lies in price control of goods and services. Adamu Imam has more. In an interview with Trust TV on the developments regarding the salary and wages of Nigerian workers, civil servants in Bounchi State are voicing their displeasure over the poor state of affairs. The civil servants stress that the current economic situation in the country has made it difficult for Nigerians to meet their everyday needs due to rising inflation. Because uh, if we compare with the former uh, uh, they did to now, our, our salary will not take us two weeks at least. Uh, our problem to pay school fees to us, our children is too hard. The 30,000 minimum wage as of now, as of now, as of now, if you consider the things and uh, the commodities, cannot take you just 10 days at least you are hoping the minimum wage meanwhile for individuals like Salau Hassan and Mama Rashida they want to see the president take proactive steps to address the concerns of Nigerians with urgency because anything that affects the workers indirectly or directly can affect the masses because everybody has responsibility as relatives and others. Because when workers are suffering, because the salary is not, things are so ex expensive. So God will help them to do what they should do. The Tripartite Minimum Wage Committee has been mandated to come up with workable recommendations that will improve the wages of Nigerian workers across board as the cost of living continue to rise. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Away from Nigeria, Northern Ireland's devolved government is said to be restored two years to the day since it collapsed. A meeting of the Legislative Assembly at Stormont in Belfast will be held on Saturday at 1300 GMT to revive the power-sharing institutions. For the first time, the role of First Minister in the Executive will be held by an Irish nationalist. Stormont's recall follows the Democratic Unionist Party, DUP, and then its boycott over Brexit trade rules. It is exactly two years since the DUP withdrew its first minister in protest against extra checks and paperwork for goods moving between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. The move collapsed the power sharing executive and the party since then has been blocking a restoration of the institutions. But on Monday, the DUP agreed to return to Stormont after a deal with the government aimed at addressing unionist concerns over Northern Ireland's place within the UK internal market. And in sports, at Dimola Lukman's 41st minute strike was all Super Eagles needed to beat Angola and reach the semi-final of the Africa Cup of Nations, Afghan in Côte d'Ivoire. Lukman's score was assisted by Moses Simon following a counter-attack move that split the Angolan defence. In the second half, Victor Simon's firm herder from Adimola Lukman's free kick was palmed into the net by Angola goalkeeper Dominic. But the goal was disallowed as the striker was said to have been fractionally offside. Nigeria will face the winner of the quarter-final match between Cape Verde and South Africa on February 7th by 6pm at the Stade de la Paix, Boaké. Still in sports, the Confederation of African Football has revealed the financial rewards for participating nations at the ongoing 2023 Africa Cup of Nations tournament in Côte d'Ivoire. According to CAF, the winner of the African 2023 will take home $7 million, 
while the runners-up will pocket $4 million. The two losing semi-finalists will each receive $2.5 million, while the four losing quarter-finalists will each receive $1.3 million. In this circular, CAF added that the eight teams knocked out in the round of 16 will get $800,000 each. The Super Eagles, being the first team to enter the semi-final stage, have secured the sum of $2.5 million for the Nigeria Football Federation NFF. Though targets in the trophy with the slogan, let's do it again, the NFF will be $7 million richer if the dream of winning the African for the fourth time comes true. And with that, we've come to the end of the news at this hour. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms for more news, documentary and programme. I am Chiamaka Mwafo, on behalf of myself and the news team. Thanks for watching.